Hello, Loveland Magazine, Cassie the Food Guru here, and we are standing at Ramsey's Trailside. I am with John Zelke, one of the owners. It's right off the bike trail in the heart of downtown Loveland, and it has been popping ever since it's opened. As you can see behind me, they have a new enclosed patio. They have all kinds of new renovations, so we're here to get the scoop today. John, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic, thank you. Awesome, glad to have you here. So, John, what I want to do is I want to get into the history aspect of it all. Right. So we uh, purchased the building in February, I believe, uh, right before the fire. And as you said, Colonel Paxton was kind of the founder of Loveland, um, which our other restaurant is, is named after. So we actually threw it out on uh, Facebook to, to come up with a name and uh, somebody had, had put that in for uh, John Ramsey, which was kind of the co-founder with Colonel Paxson that kind right. of developed Loveland. Okay. And that's where we came up with Ramsey's, and then obviously with the bike trail, tagged it with Ramsey's Trailside. Right, and it's pretty cool that, um, you know, one of the guys' names is John, so like, you know, do they get you confused every once in a while? Like, hey, did you reincarnate? Like, where, where'd you come from here? <laughs> I have been asked if I am John Ramsey. Yeah. Unfortunately, I am not. Common <laughs> sense, right? You're not from 1848. Right. Um, but fun fact, uh, the cool thing about that is what I was reading is that John Ramsey's daughter, Isabella, married James Loveland, who technically founded the town of Loveland, uh, was the postmaster, general store owner. So that's kind of cool to talk about too, that he was a part of the Ramsey family and basically created Loveland. Exactly, yes. Those two, um, that, those two families with the uh, Paxton, you know, everything, Paxton Woods, Paxton right. Cemetery, um, you know, we helped revitalize the cemetery for Ramsey's Paxson. I remember and that. Then, uh, you know, just try to keep it in the community. Right. You know, as, right. as tight knit as Loveland is, and we just thought it would, would fit well. And, and I agree. And, and obviously, this building alone is a piece of history. Um, so, what I want to talk about now is I, I know now, was it 20, did you say 2017 when you opened or 2018? We opened in 2018, okay. November of 2018. And and the fire was in 2017. 17, so yes. We purchased the building uh, February of 2017. Now, the interesting fact about that was in the early 2000s, there was already talk about you kind of taking over this building because there needed to be another family friendly restaurant, quality food, and then the fire happened. So let's touch on that a little bit. I know this building has kept the history intact, but there's been a lot of renovations. Um, how did you keep that history in intact, and how did that? fire, how did the whole, whole scenario affect you? Um, I know it was a lot for the town, um, but I know it kind of put the uh, building on the back end of things. I know you wanted maybe to open Ramsey's a little bit sooner. So how did that happen? Uh, all kinds of things happened. Oh, yeah. um, so it allowed us to do uh, a complete renovation, uh, but we wanted to keep the old school feel right. uh, with the brick and we've got the original ceilings in there. Um, as far as the addition, we wanted it to be open air, you know, wanted Amen. it to be patio friendly, but we also had to survive through the winter. Right. And, and that's where the garage uh, door idea came about. Um, so as far as the original building, uh, half of it is the dining room, and then the other back half is the, the kitchen. And then uh, up upstairs is, is more of mechanical. It's, it's really not for any use. I've got an office up there, but it's, okay. it's not for any retail or okay. anything like that. Yeah, we were interested in that. We're like, what's in that front room? I've yeah. never been. Is it VIP? Like, it, why am I not invited? <laughs> I don't know if anybody wants to go up there. In we, your office, right? <laughs> we do hear things occasionally oh, late gosh. at night. Oh, uh, gosh. There is Linda Lou up there that my staff likes to call her. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> it's, it's an old building. <laughs> so with that, John, um, let's touch on your background a little bit. Um, I know a lot of people know Ralph, right? Sure. A lot of people know Kevin. A lot of people should know you. You do a lot for this community, but you're kind of the introverted do-gooder, if that makes <laughs> sense. You really are. You, you've hit the I'm serious. So, um, so talk about yourself. Let me know your background. Okay. How did you get into this? Sure. Uh, so I'm from Lexington, Kentucky. Okay. My wife and I moved up here uh, five years ago, actually, to the apartment complex across the street. And that's how I got hooked up with these guys. Okay. Uh, started working at Paxton's in uh, uh, 2015, 16, and then got to know Kevin and Ralph. And, and once they purchased the bu building over here is when I, I partnered up with these guys. Okay. Um, you know, I've got a wife, two little children, three-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old. 
Uh, we live here in Loveland, right around the corner, and, you know, I'm here all the time, whether it's here at the restaurant or down here with my kids. If I go out to eat, I'm going to the works or to Paxton's or Tahona. Right, uh, right. Uh, you know, so we, we love Loveland, and it's where we uh, set up shop. Amen to that. And so, you know, community wise, what all are you involved in? I know you're involved in a ton, like you were mentioning the cemetery restoration. Um, what are you involved in, I guess, um, group wise or just different things you like to donate to? Uh, we're involved in a lot of the charities, Cancer Free Kids, we mm -hmm. do a lot with them. Dragonfly Foundation, we do a, a big fundraiser for March Madness with, with those guys. Uh, we do anything local as far as the, the uh, high school or any you know, the, the private schools here in Loveland. We are involved with Life Food Pantry um, and many others that, you know, that I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you know. Cause you do so much. Well, we, we <laughs> try and you know, you gotta scratch my back, I'll scratch your back type thing. So. Amen to that, amen right. to that. So as you can see, we have moved to the second floor. Uh, this is somewhat renovated as well. People love this spot to watch live music, um, have little get togethers, sit out at the outside bar. And of course we like to call it the Ramsey's Treehouse. As you can see the beautiful plants over there perfect name as it's sitting up kind of in the sky with uh, a little bit of covering on top so i do feel like i'm in a tree house how about you john it is like a tree house <laughs> there you go <laughs> all right john so i want to move right into the menu and the staff but before we do that i want to talk about the theme of the restaurant so you know every restaurant has a theme right keeps people coming back in your opinion what theme do you really like to hit home when your staff comes in each day and you know when your guests come in uh, more of a, a casual atmosphere, family friendly, something for everybody, uh, you know, guest service, uh, make sure everybody gets taken care of once they walk in the door. Um, obviously the open air uh, with what we're doing with our concept, being a patio uh, type restaurant. Right. Um, but you know, just making sure that everybody gets taken care of when they come in and you can come off the bike trail and your gym shorts or you can come in a suit and tie and have a little business meeting. Right, so, right. Kind of. and, and with that, John, you know, obviously before we moved up here, we were kind of talking about the labor shortage, right? So when you're finding new staff members, when you're hiring, what do you look for to have somebody walk in the door and really set that theme in, in place there? What kind of person are you looking for just for any position? Personality, you know, somebody that can speak to somebody. Um, you know, with the younger kids, with the phones, they like to text. Uh, if you can get one to have a conversation with you, then it's on you to train and develop those guys. Right. A lot of my servers were expos or bussers to kind of come up through the ranks and are now serving. And, right. You know, kind of cycle them through, the, you know, three or four years of high school and then first couple years of college is, uh, is how we kind of keep, you know, the morale and, and the, the well-being of our staff nucleus wise is right. just training and developing those guys right and one thing that i noticed um obviously i live across the street so i do like to frequent here you really in my opinion don't have much turnover that really says something i mean i see the same faces all the time yeah. um in fact i saw uh kate kate yeah. gary works here sure. now so yeah. i love her so tell me about that is it just the atmosphere or just you know you're working working with their schedules you're letting them come back from college a little bit of all that, you know. Um, once they get in, we try to treat them right, and, and we are. We're very flexible on their schedules. That's why I have over 100 employees. Amen. Uh, I've got a lot of 16 to 18-year-olds that need to go on six vacations a summer, and, and that's okay. You know, if they can give me one day a week consistently, then, then you know. Six that, eight. Wouldn't that <laughs> be nice? Right? I know, to live their life. Right. But then I've got my full-time guys that have, a lot of them been with me for since day one or very shortly after that, you know, hold us down during the winter when the kids aren't here during the summer and, right. you know, really make this restaurant go around. I love to hear that. I mean, the staff is what makes the difference, um, in my opinion. So let's get right into the menu. It's my favorite part. So when this facility was opening and Kevin Egan, you know, was being interviewed, his big focus was he wants to offer vegans and vegetarians meal options, great meal options, right? I'm vegan. There's not a whole lot of places in Ohio, right? It's farm raised. Yeah beef you know that's what it is in ohio so you know one of the interesting things that kevin said was separate grill for vegans right and carnivores and vegans can coexist here 
Tell me a little bit about that atmosphere. We were just discussing it and you said you'd never really seen or been in a, you know, a restaurant that hits home with the vegan cuisine. Tell me about how that kind of affected you and how you feel now. Um, gratifying now, uh, to, now yeah. to, to answer your, your questions. Um, yes, we do offer many vegan uh, options or menu items that can be vegan or right. vegetarian. We do have a separate grill that we prepare vegan items on. Um, but that's what we wanted to create in our menu. You know, somebody that can come off the bike trail, get a cheeseburger if they want, or some chicken wings, or grab a nice salad, or we've got several different bowls that are, you know, vegan and vegetarian friendly. Right. Um, and, you know, they all can add chicken or steak or salmon and they don't have to be vegan either. Right, you know, right, but right. It was definitely a, a goal for ours, for us, to uh, make sure that we captured both audiences. And it goes along, once again, with the quality food, the family-friendly atmosphere, welcoming everyone. Sure. So that definitely hits home for me, especially. So what I want to do now, obviously I know the menu pretty much by heart. It's embarrassing, but I do. So I want to go down each section. Okay. Name a couple things and then kind of talk about it. Sure. So beginners, some of my favorites mm -hmm. and obviously a fan favorite. Photo worthy, <laughs> the Bavarian pretzel with yep. beer cheese. Sure. Oh my gosh. Um, that, the fried zucchini and the Brussels sprouts with the bourbon glaze and the maple syrup on the side. Talk a little bit about those items. The pretzel speaks for itself. Um, you know, we threw it on the menu just because it, it looked great. It was, it's a great product. Uh, it can be vegan if you want to have some yep, mustard, you know, with it. Uh, it doesn't have an egg wash on, on the pretzel or anything. Uh, the fried zucchini sticks have, have been a big hit. Mm, um, so good. You know, we make the horseradish sauce here in house that, that goes with it. Um, and then the Brussels sprouts. I would never in a million years believe <laughs> that we would sell as many Brussels sprouts that we do. It's I mean, it's comparable to French fries, and yep. that's crazy in this in this business to sell something, you know, as much as French fries go out. But uh, the guys in the back, they do a great job. You oh, know, yeah. it's, it, it's not difficult. We just saute them in a little oil and uh, garlic, salt, and pepper. And then our, our bourbon glaze on the side, you know, I've had people that put it on top of ice cream mm. I've had Vanilla. people that want to dip their fries in it yep. but it it's uh, definitely become a, a signature item here at Ramsey's and this is my happy vegan face on that one guys <laughs> um, so salads um, you did have this uh, harvest mm -hmm. oh my god what was it called the harvest Autumn harvest that was the best salad sure. I've ever had in my life it had the roasted chickpeas on it yep. and when is it coming back? I just need to know this. It'll be back in the fall. Okay. It was like, uh, it tasted like candy in a salad. So good. It, oh. it was delicious. And I'm not a salad guy. I'm, I'm the carnivore of the group. Yes, but, yes. Uh, that salad, when you when you put everything together, it had great crunch, great chew, and, and it really Fresh. tasted phenomenal. So I it'll agree. be back in the fall. Oh, thank God. We replaced it with the greens and berries yes. uh, salad for the, for the summertime. Yep. Uh, but yeah, sometime October when we change the menu for the fall, it, okay. it'll be back for oh, sure. 100%. Thank God we should name it the Cassie salad. <laughs> All right. So the other salads that I care for and I know are pretty popular, the avocado quinoa salad, the wedge salad, yep. And I know David Miller here on the camera likes the taco salad. So, out, you know, out of all the salads, which one do you see most often? I know the wedge is pretty popular. Sure. Uh, to be honest with you, across the board, they're, they're pretty equal. Okay. Uh, the seasonal ones, once we change the menu initially, spike up. Right. But then after, you know, the first couple of weeks, it's it kind of, especially as hot as it is outside. Everybody wants a salad or, right. or something a little bit lighter right. because it's, it's so hot. Um, but. Right now, the, the greens and berries salad, just right. for the seasonal salad. But the avocado quinoa salad, we sell a ton of. The taco salad, you know, um, but all of our salads really, really sell well. So I agree. And that that berry salad, um, mm -hmm. once again, very photo worthy, very bright, sure. colorful. So I love that salad as well. Um, one of my favorite sections is the bowls. Okay. Um, because you can add shrimp, steak, tofu, anything you want to it, and the tofu is delicious, marinated perfectly. Um, so one of my favorites is the, zu the zuni ah, zucchini noodle Thai bowl. Yep. It's a tongue twister. Okay. Bell peppers, mushrooms, onions, and Thai peanut sauce. Yep. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Have you tried any of the bowls? Any favorites? I, I've tried them all. Yes. Um, zucchini bowl is my favorite. Oh, yeah. Um, just because I don't like cilantro. <laughs> yeah, oh, cilantro yeah, 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 rice. Yeah. But uh, the zucchini bowl, we, we do that in-house. We hand spiral the zucchinis. Oh. Uh, 
it's made with a, uh, a Thai peanut sauce. Right. It's, it's, it's really good. It is uh, so good. And then topped with, like you said, uh, mushrooms, peppers, and onions, and then your choice of any protein. Right. Or not, you know. You can leave it, yeah. There's plenty to eat there, you yes. know, it, it, without the protein. So. And the portions are big. That's yeah. what I love. And, and it, the prices are fair. Yeah. That, that's one of my favorite things about the restaurant as well. So let's go ahead and move on to the Trailside Classics. One of my other go-tos, it's the vegetable wrap. Mm -hmm. Love that one. Uh, the Impossible Burger, the Brisket Sandwich, and the Classic Steak Burger. Oh, yeah. Talk a little bit about those. The classic steak burger is a is a blend of steak. It's a sirloin. It's a strip. It's a ribeye. It's not your regular old ground beef. Yes, uh, special. Probably our most popular item on the menu. To be honest with you, uh, it's the Impossible Burger since it's come out has been phenomenal. Uh, gives a lot of people a healthier version of a burger that right. still wants to have the texture, the look, the feel, the taste of a burger, but it, it's a little bit cleaner. Uh, and then, I'm sorry, what was the? Oh, the, the brisket. Other? I know, well, that's probably pretty sound. vegetable The wrap. smoked brisket yep. is, uh, was a new item that came on last year that right. has been fantastic for us. We top it with some crispy onion straws oh. and barbecue sauce on top. And it, it's, it's probably right now my favorite menu item. I probably eat it two or three times a week. There you go, it's there you go. So good. we're finding out John's diet. <laughs> um, one of the cool things I do like about the burger options is that you can add any toppings you want and there's no additional charge. That doesn't happen anywhere. So once again, quality food, family friendly, good prices for the family. If you're a family of, you know, I had six kids in my family. It was like over $100 every time we ate. So that is awesome. So in regards to the prices, I mean, I, I would say, don't you think, I mean, they're, they're fair as possible. Absolutely. Value is, is what, what we're looking for. You know, we want somebody to come here multiple times a month or multiple right. times a week. We don't want them to have to you know, save up to come out here, you know, once every three or four months. Right. Um, kids meals are, are super cheap. Uh, like you said, I mean, you can bring in a, a family of five or six in here and, and eat um, very affordably. Right. You know, um, right. Bowls and salads are nine bucks. And a lot of our appetizers are under ten bucks. Wow. And sandwiches are twelve or thirteen. Uh, I think the most expensive thing on our menu might be fifteen bucks yeah. or maybe sixteen. Which isn't that bad, it's, anyways. You know, and that's for a salmon and two side items. Right. You know, right. So. Right. Uh, but yes, value is is key. So. And portion sizes are great too. Um, now, something I'm kind of curious about. I've never had it. Obviously, being vegan, the dessert. The holy cow. So it's a glazed donut with vanilla ice cream, strawberry, caramel, or chocolate glaze. Have you had that? Absolutely. Absolutely. And? Uh, quite a few times. <laughs> so, yes, we fry the donut here in house, uh, glaze it up, big scoop of ice cream on top, and then it's your choice. Uh, a lot of people get all three. Um, you know, some do oh, chocolate covered gosh. strawberries, it. <laughs> uh, but it, it's delicious. Uh, and, you know, we, we sell a ton of them. Oh. I kind of want to try it if only, if only, if, if only it wasn't not vegan at all whatsoever, right? Um, so the curbside services. So we've gone through the menu. They do have kids meals, as we said previously. The curbside service has been phenomenal for you on the bike trail. So if you guys don't know what that is, right over down where we were, there's usually a little hut set up, a little table and you can get drinks to go uh, this is a dora district so you can get drinks to go wine beer uh, seltzers so tell me how that's been going i know it's been successful there's been lines wrapped around the trail on friday saturdays and sundays it's uh it's great it's great for loveland to have the the dora uh area um and you know it it allows us to capture more revenue from outside of the restaurant yep. if that makes sense yep. i don't have to have a seat for these people necessarily uh the city's done a great job with the events that have been put on as well as the chamber mm -hmm. uh you know with the bands and brews and and the fourth of july stuff and all that you know they was able to just walk off off the trail grab a beer or a glass of wine like you said and be able to walk you know the block down here um has really allowed us to you know have more staff, make more money, and just give us an outlet to serve more people. And it's really a low overhead situation, low overhead cost, which is perfect for, I wouldn't say you're necessarily a small business, but a local business, you know, 
you don't have multiple locations yet. Yet, uh, dot, dot, yet. dot. <laughs> so this last little bit, John, it's kind of like a quick fire. I just want to ask you a couple questions. Some of them might be random, but it's all about the theme of our interview, just okay. letting Loveland know sure. about, you know, local food establishments. So what sets Ramsey's apart from other restaurants? Staff and service. Staff and service, yes. awesome. See, and you even have the quick fire, you're like two words, staff and service. Why do guests keep coming back? Same thing? Uh, same thing in our food. Um, for the quality of the food that we put out for the prices that we have and, and in our atmosphere, you know, it's great um, as far as the, the outdoor seating and, and staff and service. See, <laughs> staff and service, that's all it is, right? Best Ramsey memory thus far? Ooh, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. I would probably say July 4th this year. Amen. Uh, coming back from from COVID last year and seeing, you know, previous COVID down here on July 4th and then seeing what it really got to this July 4th. So fun. It was wild. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I, that's probably, I know it's fresh, but no, that's, you're, that's, that was a big one. It was a memory for me, too. Yeah. I'm with you. So five years down the road, where do you see Ramsey's? Do you have any goals or plans? Ah. Uh, who knows? Yeah. There might be something up our sleeve. Um, what? Dot, 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 foreshadowing. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I see us being right here, you know, doing the same thing that we're doing now is taking care of people, serving good food, good atmosphere. Um, I don't see that changing. But, you know, like I said, we might have something up our sleeve down the road. You better tell me first, John. <laughs> You'll be here. Thank you. And lastly, um, I did want to hit on this because it was a big moment for you. I was there, um, nominated as well, the Little Miami River uh, Chamber Alliance Awards 2019. You won Business of the Year. We did. That yeah. has to be a memory. Talk yeah. about that. Absolutely. Uh, year one um, for us, you know, and, and it was a crazy year, you know, just trying to get open and, and figuring out what a summer is really like here with the patio seating. And uh, it all goes back to the staff. You know, I've, I've got a hundred kids that I call them and, and they do a great job and and without them you know it, we definitely wouldn't have been able to to pull off that award but it, it's that was really really cool yeah so. very humble yeah. staff sir I love that um, so lastly I like doing this with everybody that's interviewed look into the camera and tell Loveland why you love this city <laughs> Loveland I love you guys uh, because of everything around it from the the community downtown, from the schools all around. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I uprooted my family and we bought a house here and, and we're here to stay. Uh, it's all about the community and it's just got that cool factor to it. That's why I love Loveland. Very well spoken, John. Awesome. Well, John, thanks for having us. We appreciate it. We it's can't awesome. wait to share with the community yeah. uh, the next food guru journey. Um, I will be stopping in very soon, of course, and uh, amen to that. And good luck with everything. And we can't see, we can't wait to see what the future holds for Ramsey's. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. All right, Loveland. We'll see you next time.